In a small town down in Arkansas Where the river flows There's a man with a passion That everybody knows He's got a collection That'll make you stare Vintage pocket knives Laid with tender care Howdy, howdy, everybody. Welcome to HT's EDC. Coming at you from the front porch this morning. And without further ado, we will show you this lovely lady, Miss Abby. She is in her spot this morning. Choosing to be on my right-hand side this morning by my feet this morning. And uh, we are ready to make you guys a video this morning. Uh, we have three new knives that have came into the collection and go ahead and rip the band-aid off yes we have another gift from the community uh, I kind of warned you guys yesterday uh, there was a lot that came in uh, starting uh, back maybe Thursday or Friday of last week um, and there is just no way I can run all of it out on a thankful Thursday um, so we are breaking it up. There's going to be like two or three days of uh, gifts that have came in uh, from from you guys. Um, and I say, uh, I cannot say I'm sorry for that. Uh, it, does, uh, it does get somewhat uncomfortable, a little embarrassing, like uh, all you do is show gifts on here and stuff that people have sent you. Well, folks, uh, people send it in, and I am overwhelmed uh, and just blown away when that happens. Evidently, they see something uh, in my channel, and they, they send this stuff. And, folks, the least I can do is come on here and say thank you and do a video. A, I want to. I want to show off uh, the new stuff that has been sent in. Uh, so I guess it's one of those things, sorry, not sorry. Uh, I don't want to come across as just, uh, you know, like a brat that just, you know, gets all this new stuff. Um, but I, especially this week, and it is not all the time, folks. It is not every week that I get something from the community. Uh, there's sometimes there go, you know, there's two and three weeks in there before something will come in. This particular week, uh, it has been heavy, and I'm not going to not come on here and say thank you and show these knives. I'm just not. So there's where the sorry, not sorry comes in. Uh, I, I'm i going to make a video, and yeah, so there's that. Uh, I am not a spoiled brat. I am not uh, pining on here that, that I know of. Hey, send me free stuff. Send me this. Send me that. People do it out of the goodness of their heart because that is what this community is about. And uh, I'm not gonna be a jerk on the other end and say, no, don't send me, you know, don't send me that. I, I don't want it, I, I don't want your blessing. Uh, who would do that? That's not the right thing to do either. But anyway, it has been heavy this week. I'm gonna have several videos showing off some of this stuff. And yeah, it's one of those, uh, sorry, not sorry. But anyway, this one has came into me from Brother Pete, Brother Peter. Uh, I call him Pete. We're friends now, so I shorten it up to Pete. He, he, he signs his name uh, when he's talking to me with Pete, so I, I think that's good. Uh, I think that's copacetic. But anyway, uh, Brother Peter, Pete, uh, is a just a big person in our community. He follows a lot of us uh, content creators. Uh, he is an old, an OG horse trader. I know he has pulled off. We were talking about it yesterday. I actually had the opportunity to talk to Pete on the telephone. I uh, wanted to personally thank him for, for some of this and uh, get to know him a little better. But uh, he has told me, and I, I'm not going to you know, name drop on here, but several uh, of... Uh, you know, several of you guys, and, and there's videos out there that they discuss Pete and what they've got from Pete and traded with Pete. My point is, he is a frequent flyer in the community. Uh, he he's a he's an old school horse trader, uh, which I love. I think that's awesome. But uh, 
anyway, Pete uh, watches my videos, obviously, and uh, he noticed two different things. Number one, HT likes them biggins. He knows that I am kind of the resident big knife guy in the community. Uh, that is my speed. I love them. Uh, and he recognized that for my videos. And two, he knows I am really uh, amping up my Remington Bullet coll collection right now. I am uh, bringing those into the collection. I am looking for them. They're on my radar. And he has seen that uh, I've been... Uh, I've been trying to collect these old Remington bullet knives. Well, that was the perfect storm for him to gift me these three knives because uh, he told me the backstory that he found these knives at a gun and knife show uh, about 15 years back. Uh, and he thought he would like them. They look great. Obviously, we'll see that in a minute. Uh, these Remington knives are just beautiful knives. But anyway, he thought he would tote them, that he would like them, he would carry them, and when he got them home, they were just too big for him. Uh, and talking to Pete, he kind of likes more of a medium size, I'd call a medium size knife, uh, more of your canoe slash Saudi Junior. Three and a half, the, stuff, the knives, he, he didn't list those two, but I'm just using them for size reference. But he likes about a three and a half to three and three quarter inch knife. That's his sweet spot. And as you you're going to see here in a little bit, these are considerably north of that. Uh, so his, uh, his, I guess, loss, it's not a loss because uh, yeah, he enjoyed them and he was able to pass them on to me. But it's my gain. Uh, he, he said they were just sitting around uh, in his collection collecting dust. He was not going to tote them. Uh, and he's watched my videos and seen how I loved big knives and I loved Remington's and the light bulb went off I need to reach out to HT and see if he'd like to uh, if he'd like these three knives and yes I do <laughs> yes I would uh, I would absolutely uh, take those off your hand brother Pete's what I told him uh, and here they are and by the way just a tidbit note uh, brother Pete is a fellow Arkansanian uh, come to find out, he is like two and a half, three hours uh, north of me up in, uh, well, I won't name the city he's from, but let's, we'll leave it at, uh, he's about two and a half, three hours away right here in the stone, so that is another cool factoid. Uh, me and him may actually be able to meet up, uh, we talked about on the phone, maybe do a meet and greet, but uh, anyway, he is kindred, kindred Arkenstone spirit, and uh, so... That just that's a cherry on top that it came from a community member that's a, a fella Arkansanian. How about let's show a knife, HT? So the first knife I'm going to show you comes in this box right here. Remington on the front. And if you guys want to pause that, there is the model number, which is R1253. And all these knives, they come with the little plastic baggie, the warranty information, the whole nine still in the boxes. And this knife that we're going to talk about first is the 1253 or the guide, the Remington Bullet Guide. So we will put this box up and we will finally show a knife. And we will get this big hunking thing open. And I got it back up. Check that thing out. We have, I call these banana trappers. This chassis right here, if you kind of hold it like that, and you, why do you call it a banana trapper? If you see that curve, they are definitely a curve. Let me kind of close off this blade where you can kind of see what I'm talking about. But you see how these uh, this handle is curved, kind of but like a banana-ish. Uh, but anyway... This is, we'll close it up real quick and show you what I'm talking about. That is five and three eighths inches closed, folks. Uh, so definitely a big one. If you guys know my folding hunters, uh, the uh, my favorite knife or knife style pattern, the folding hunter for reference, should have brought one out here. Those are five 
5.25, five and a quarter inches closed. This guy here is actually longer than a folding hunter. So it is ever more a big and a wow. Get this thing back open. But yeah, five and three eighths inches closed. We have a big old whopping four inch blade here, clip point blade. And we will get up here and check this blade out. And right away we can see we have a midway saber grind. Check that out right there. Big saber grind on this one with a big, long, beautiful swedge up here uh, that starts about the crown of this clip point blade, goes all the way out to the tip. Very, very beautiful blade. Check out this long, deep, long pull nail nick. Love, love, oh yeah, love the long pull nail nicks. Probably my favorite uh, nail nick on knives and uh, as Abby bumps the uh, tripod here. Um, but yeah, this is just a beauty. Clip point blade, saber ground. Uh, as far as the handles, we have this uh, brown Delrin on here. Of course, we have the beautiful nickel silver bullet shield that makes these bullet knives, Remington bullets. They all come with this beautiful uh, shield on them. And this knife, is actually a backlock. Check this out. Let y'all listen to this. Nice and stout, which a knife of this size sure needs to be, but this is a backlock, a locking knife. And this is called the Guide. The Remington Bullet Guide and it is a beauty. Let y'all check that out one more time. Get it here and boom, there she goes closed. But that is the first one. We will set that one down. And there is actually two of the same knife. Uh, we will show them real quickly just to show you guys. He sent two of these and we will set one down now. And we will talk about it. And this, well, we'll show you the box real quick. Little lighter colored box on this one. And there is the model number. This is a 1273. The other was the 1253 guide. Well, this is the 1273 master guide. And what's the difference? Well, number one, the guide was a lockback. <laughs> this is a slip joint, and it is a two blade. Check this out, folks. Same, well, let me, let me back up. Same five and three eighths inches. They are identical, so it is the same hand filling, whopping five and three eighths inches uh, closed, but we have a two bladed slip joint. And we definitely have some different blades. Basically, the same chassis here. We have that same banana trapper uh, chassis on it. But as you can come up here to the main blade, we have a spear point. And you talk about a long pull. Look at the length of that long pull nail nick on that. Is that not awesome? Oh, wow. Love, love, love that. And we have just a little bit right here on the end of this one. We have another little swedge. I don't know if that light's hitting it right there. But right here where I'm touching with my finger, yeah, maybe you can see it right there. Have a cool little touch of swedging right here on the top of that spear point. And, and we're not done. Check out this pin blade. My goodness. That, folks... <laughs> That pin blade on this knife is as big as the master blade or main blade on a lot of case knives. Uh, that thing is, and I should have brought my uh, I should have brought my tape measure, but I'm just looking at cutting edge here. One, two. That's about a two and a half inch cutting edge, probably a two and three quarter, almost three inch blade as a secondary blade. Uh, big, very useful pin blade. But uh, we'll close that one real quick. 
kind of let you look at this thing in hand. Again, if you were to choke up all the way here to the finger guard, uh, yeah, I got a good solid inch and a half of handle uh, sticking out the back. But if you just kind of grab this thing naturally, uh, you still you still got three quarters of an inch or an inch, depending on where you grab it, of real estate. So it will pass the HT four finger grip test uh, in spades, flying colors, any analogy you want to throw at it. You grab this knife, uh, unless you are the Incredible Hulk or uh, King Kong, you are going to fit on this knife. It's a big one. And you guys know OHT don't shy away from those. We love them on this channel and we carry them. So he came to the right place, Brother Pete. Thank you so much, brother. Uh, I love these two ni uh, three knives. And uh, he, he sent them to the right person because I will a thousand percent tote something like this. He also, I'm sure watching my videos, knows how much I love a spear point. And that is just awesome. And some of you may say, well, HT, isn't that kind of a spay blade? Uh, I looked up, uh, the listing calls it a spear. I think it's a spear, and Remington on their site agreed with me. But it is a little bit kind of clipped off at the top. It does have spay-ish uh, qualities. So if you wanted to call that a long spay blade, I, I would I would save the brain cells and uh, wouldn't argue with you. But uh, to me, it's a spear point, and most importantly to Remington, they list that as a spear point. Uh, whatever you call it, it is gorgeous. A uh, wow, beautiful, beautiful blade shape. Love it, love it. Oh yeah, I love it. Uh, and let's t let's talk about. Check y'all out. Well, it's just wanting to go, isn't it? Let's show y'all some walk and talk on it. Get it here to about the 30%. And boom, she is coming home. How about the secondary blade? We'll do the same thing. Get about to where she's supposed to go. And boom. She's on her way. No problems there. What we did have, uh, what we did have though, um, I was telling Brother Pete about it on the phone, is we had one of these that had a centering problem uh, on this on this guy right here. Um, it came to me, and its main blade, the old spear, was really on uh, touching, I mean literally touching, scraping uh, the liners. So one of these was uh, had some poor centering, uh, honestly probably... Uh, should have been sent back, and I'm sure if he, uh, if Pete uh, ever was going to try to carry it, he would have sent them back. Uh, Remington at the time, and still would, uh, would uh, would fix that. But uh, I actually watched a video from uh, shout out to brother Jason. Uh, we talked about Jason yesterday uh, on the video. Great buddy of mine up in Missouri. I'm going to call it like you call it, buddy. Uh, up in Missouri. And he has a video uh, on blade centering and how to fix it. Well, I remember seeing that, and I probably called him a couple of times. I, I, I called myself, I'm going to try to fix blade centering. And I know he has a video. Uh, shout out to his channel. I, I'm not going to take any credit for it. If you guys want to try to tackle this or see what I'm talking about, you can go over there to uh, Ozark Boy 417 and uh, he talks about it and maybe even shows it a little uh, on his channel. But anyway, I, I burst up on it and I probably called him two or three times, asked him little stupid questions because I called myself, I'm going to go fix some blade centering. Uh, and this one needed it. Well, it works. Uh, I actually did this knife, and I had another one in my collection. I just got uh, got jiggy with it yesterday, and uh, got out there. And uh, both both accounts, uh, I I fixed fixed blade centering. And uh, brother Pete, I was telling him about it that this one was so bad that when you were opening and closing your knife. Yeah, I mean, if it's scraping the liner, you're dulling your knife. Now, a lot of us don't get too worked up over that. Uh, we have come to accept uh, some poor centering when 
shame on us. We probably a long time ago should have drawn a line in the sand and uh, not accepted what we, uh, we probably accept too much these days. <coughs> case, <coughs> case knives. Um, anyway, uh, got to get a quick clear my throat. I don't know why I got uh, all choked up there. But anyway, we, uh, we take a lot of uh, that poor centering sometimes and we just take it, well, it is what it is. And honestly, when they're not scraping the liners, it is more aesthetic. Does it drive somebody like me nuts? Do I like a centered knife, which I think I can speak for a lot of you, I won't even say put a percentage on it, but a lot of you like a good centered knife. It, it just, it looks good. It, it just shows that the tolerances on that knife were, uh, there was attention to detail. We like a centered knife, but we have grown kind of numb to poor centering. Well, this one wasn't just poor centered. This was scraping a liner and that folks to me is a defective knife. If it is scraping the liners, that means when you are opening to use your knife and closing after you've used your knife and you're hitting that liner, you are dulling your blade edge. Uh, so you're going to be sharpening that knife a lot, uh, a lot more frequent just by simply using it. You don't want to dull your knife by, well, when you use your knife, you, obviously you're starting to dull it when you're cutting media. But you don't want to be dulling it, opening it, closing it. You guys get the picture. Well, this one was right on the uh, right on the liner, but anyway, without too much more, if you guys can see, and this both of them actually were, they were both kind of pushed to one side, but this main blade right here was the one that I'm talking about. It was you could you could feel it. It was it was scraping, opening and closing. But anyway. That trick, uh, Brother Jason, I can't take credit for it. I'm glad I have it in my little arsenal now. Uh, and uh, I think he says to do this with your own risk. Uh, he has done uh, many knives. He told uh, maybe he said hundreds or 50, you know, 50 to 100 different knives. He's done that trick on successfully, but he even said he has snapped a blade. Uh, it does come with its, uh, with its own uh, risk. If you're going to try to fix, uh, fix this yourself, uh, I say if it's under warranty and, you, and if I get something like that in that I've just bought from a cust you know, from a site or whatever, I'm sending that back. That is unacceptable. That is a defective knife. Well, this one was sent in uh, to me from uh, as a gift, and uh, I I got the Kahuna's and I, I got my uh, got my pride. And uh, we went out on the back porch, and uh, it works. It does work. So just a shout-out to Jason for that tip. And sorry, buddy, to have bugged you so many times with phone calls and silly questions, but I was nervous. It was my first time. He was very gracious to talk me through those, you know, talk me off the cliff, HT, do this, do that. If you follow what I showed you, it's going to be fine. Take a breath. It was. So, Pete... We are, as Eli would say, right down Broadway on that knife now. But anyway, where are we at? 20-something minutes, goodness gracious. Thank you, Pete. Those are my three new Remington bullets. I am tickled purple to have them in the collection. Uh, yeah, I, I, he sent them to the right, pe uh, the right person because I am going to tote those and tote them I will. Uh, love it. Anyway, folks, we're gonna let you go. Hope this was fun. Hope it was. Uh, hope it was some knives that maybe you hadn't seen before. Uh, so, if you like them, if you like this kind of stuff, you like these old traditional pocket knives. Button over here. Button over here. Click them for me. Uh, the one over here. If you. If you like stuff like this, there's going to be more of it. You came to the right channel. If you're watching us for the first time, tell a friend about us. We love these traditional pocket knives, and we try to upload daily. Deer season's coming up. It might not quite be daily, but most of the rest of the year, I'm going to be out here doing this every single morning. We love you guys. Thank you for watching. For me and Abby, we're out of here. God bless. Look, knives gleaming under that old
porch light. He'll tell their stories deep into the night. Reviews and torture tests, it's a sight to see. H.G.Z.